seems like a thing to follow. So we're gonna be moving on to semifinal, winter semifinals. And winter semifinals gets started on Contested Canyon. So yeah, the theme for this, if you haven't noticed so far, is desert maps. That is what this is going to be. It's entirely about desert maps. It is... It is the theme. That is what we're doing for this particular tournament. I mean, anyone can pick a map that they want once they lose. But I don't think anyone's going to be picking water. I would be surprised. They might pick maps that happen to have water on them. Yeah, Contested Canyon is a map I've actually done a cast of... I think for Nada, actually. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Alright, so we are going to be getting that started right away. With no delay, the players get into this and... Semifinals, winner semifinals! Coming to you right now, once again, 63, bringing win. Unfortunately, none of my regular co-commentators is available at the moment. I mean, Kane's on Skype, but I think they're asleep. I think their computer just happens to be on for whatever reason. And this does look fairly familiar. So we're going to be... Well... Gonna be seeing how how this continues. Golda and Drone are going strong so far. I mean, they're basically the favorite to win this tournament. Like, really, you kind of can almost say that the question is who's gonna get second place. Because for them, Yelix and Scuzzy, Google Frog, Akinum, that's a pre and Arc Anakin Orphilius, probably pretty big competitors too. Like the other three, well, Kellen Ralhop, we'll see who wins out of that. I'm not sure how that'll work. It'll be interesting. Be between the loser of them and the loser of this match are going to be fighting. So we'll see how that goes. How Snuggle Base and Hokomoko come in. But yeah, there's there is some competition for second place, but for first place is going to be tricky. Wait. So this map, yeah, this is exactly what I thought. This map I casted a while ago. Actually, it was for a zero K tournament. Oh, a year ago, I think. Wow, I haven't seen this map in a long time. Yeah, I think that one had a gunship start as well. It wasn't a warrior drop or anything cheesy like that, but it was, I believe, a gunship start. Long time ago. But yeah, as I was saying, my normal co-commentators, unfortunately, not available at the moment. So I am all alone, so I hope you enjoy the sound of my voice, and I hope you enjoy the content of my analysis. I realize that my analysis is not quite as a sacked off the floors, but it is what you have, I'm afraid, or proud. Anyway, it's not Base going for freeze, and we appear to be going for a duck drop. I was thinking scallop drop, and drone, drone is suspicious, moving their fleas forward. Well, I just want to scout out, see what's going on, and we do have Valkyrie coming in. Wait a sec, wait a sec. This is a calm nap, I think. That or this is just a Valkyrie to scout, scout, and possibly throw them off the trail. Like, oh, what are they gonna do? I don't know. Okay, well. They've spotted out drone. I mean, Valkyries are a good scout unit. Their their price is probably not great. Well, it's no eighty. No, that's a great scout unit actually for gunships. Yeah, Valkyrie scouting. I totally agree with that. And this is Snuggle versus Golda. Scuzzy asking about this match. It's it's Snuggle versus Golda. That that's exactly what it is. That's what we're watching, is Snuggle Base and Hokomogo versus Golda and Drone. And that Valkyrie doing a very nice scouting job. Snuggle Base knows what's up with the gunship factory. And also, the thing with the Valkyrie, it's just a threat. Like, your opponent... Because how many people do Valkyrie scouting? It should be done more often, it's a great idea. But at the same time, it's also a bit of a mind game, because most of the time you see a Valkyrie and you go, Oh, they're going to go for transport drop, they're going to go for a rush of some kind. Like, scallop drop, or warrior drop. Or a calm nap. Although, I don't think you can do that with Valkyries. I know you can do that with Vindicators, but I don't think you can do it with Valkyries. They're... You know, it makes them really concerned. But this is... That's... 
That's not happening here. There's no drop, but at the same time, it's still probably in the back of Drone Golda's mind. It's like, there might be a drop. Is there going to be a drop? I don't know. Where's the drop? Where's the drop? And that's, well, never. <laughs> There's never a drop. Especially since the, gun the Valkyrie in question has been shot out of the sky by fleas. That doesn't help. So the threat's actually off the table at the moment. Rapier is being a much more tangible threat. And much more eminently present as well. As Gorda moves to reclaim and the ducks move to get rid of the commander. Unfortunately for them, that's not... That's easier said than done. Not going to happen too easily. And it looks like... That... That gremlin's going to be a pain in the butt. No commander killed today. Or at least not right now. Possibly later in the game, but not at the moment. Snuggle Bay's taking the south, and... Well, actually, Drone already taking the south. Taking them a lot sooner. The north is totally uncontested, though. Okamoko going on their north ridge, and Golda is actually going to have a hard time if they try to go along theirs. Okamoko already prepared for that. Setting up ducks. They are... Making sure that nothing can really assault this north section. At the same time, though, Golda able to take the center. So that is something. And right now, I'm a bit curious, what can they see? Snuggle Base and Hokomoko right now, they are not aware of that worker. They're not aware of most of the base. They know what has been there, but not necessarily what's there right now. As for Gouda and Drone, they're also pretty well aware of what's going on in their opponent's bases. I have a bit less map awareness, though. They aren't really sure what's going on in the center of the map. Hokomoko and Snuggle Base, however, are sure, and they have a bunch... Well, Hokomoko has a bunch of ducks set up. Snuggle Base... With their rapiers, five rapiers so far, continuing to produce rapiers. More and more rapiers being built up, and that is going to be not a big deal yet. However, how many gremlins are there? Well, it's two gremlins. Actually, that could be a big deal. I think Golda might be getting a little bit careless as to how many they build. I don't see any tarantulas. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I see tarantulas right in front of me. I'm just blind to tarantulas. I can't see them. So, yeah, tarantulas have been built up, though, so Drone has got the anti-air on lock. This is not going to be a problem. But Hokomoko, they're still a threat. They are still a problem. Snuggle Base and Hokomoko, they basically need to rely on that ground duck force. It's, I mean, the thing with air and ground lights is they got to basically... You got to use the ground to get rid of the anti-air, and the anti-air, once it's gone, the air can get rid of the ground forces. And it looks like that's... Not exactly what's happening. The duck's not coming in to get rid of it. Well, they can now. The gremlins have revealed their position. But G Drone has been building more gremlins. Unlike what I previously said, they're actually building m enough gremlins they can easily deal with those rapiers. And the duck's getting wasted. Completely thrown away. Hokomoko, unfortunately, not being sufficiently careful with those ducks. I should point out that they do have a military and economic disadvantage. A slight one, but it exists. And it should also be pointed out that any advantage, if you look from player to player, it's like, oh... Three or four metal, no big deal. Yeah, no big deal in 1v1. Double that for 2v2. Bear in mind, that's a that is an eight metal advantage. Oh, very nearly. It's okay, it's tightened up a bit. But it's still like four to six metal advantage. And that's not quite so trivial. Especially with the center being taken down by Golda and Hokomoko having a bit of a hard time. Not quite taking the north yet. Flea coming in to try to help get rid of that, but that's gonna be spotted. That's gonna be destroyed by the Lotus. It however does get the information it needs. Which is valuable. So Golda can come into the north. They are going to get rid of this metal extractor. They might get rid of the northern one as well. But no, they're just going to get rid of the one over in the center. Oh, third rocket is necessary. Is that going to come out? And yes, it... No, it doesn't. Goes towards the rapiers. That metal extractor has been saved. In the center of the map, Hokomoko losing ground to drone. And over the very south... Well, further south. Those venoms causing a bit of a problem. However, like I said, Duck do have a slight range advantage on Venoms. They also have homing missiles, which helps a great deal. Golda coming in. Oh, revealing that sight! That was not what Golda wanted to do. Not without attacking, at least. And that still not the biggest deal. We've hit a bit of a stalemate right now. Golda and Drone, however, have the center, so they are still... Okay, they're at a massive advantage. It's only a stalemate because no one's actually attacked, even though they... I mean, Golda and Drone, they have about a minute before they're going to have an overwhelming military advantage. They have a plus 20 metal advantage in total compared to their opponents. And note for the factories, 
both of them going for caretakers, just setting up their initial factories to build as quickly as possible. Maybe even 30 seconds before an overwhelming advantage happens. The Northwest is pretty much doomed. Gordon can take that whenever they like. And... The Southeast? The Southwest? Yeah, that drone has that pretty much taken. I think at this point, it's pretty clear that once Gordon and Drone get anywhere near a position, and once they have anything working for them, they're basically going to take the game. They're going to take the territory, they're going to take the economy, they're going to move that into a military advantage, and then they're going to just steamroll. Uh, you can't give them any ground, and it looks like Snuggle Base trying to just bypass that entirely, going into Drone's main base, getting rid of this Lotus, getting rid of possibly the factory. I don't think it's going to come out, though. That Venom is 10 seconds away from being complete. A lot of damage being dealt to the main base, but it's not enough, and the Venom comes up, and those Hermits are going down thanks to the Venom and Redback. Those Hermits do not have a chance. Drone not losing their main base, losing a bit of their economy, but nowhere near enough for it to be at all meaningful. Nothing going on there. Gorda just pumping out more units. Drone repelling the attack, and Snuggle Base forced to retreat. All Hokomoko, on the other hand, setting up boys. Good idea. While Ducks coming into the north, still going for Gorda's commander. The riot cannon makes that quite difficult to do. The boys, however, the boys would be a great option there. Haven't quite used that yet, but yeah, those ducks, not helping. Golda, their commander, has survived a lot of brushes with death right now. Maybe I was right when I first said their commander's not going to die today. Because that's how it's been going. And it's just now the, the numerical advantage. Now it's happened. Snuggle Base and Hokomoko are just far behind in terms of military. They're far behind in terms of economy, really far behind. This is a threefold, if not more advantage. Actually, no, it's threefold individually with reclaim, twofold otherwise. So it's more like four to six fold. If you, actually, no, no, never mind. It's threefold, two to threefold. But it's still plus thirty advantage, easily. Like that's that's a factory and a half. That's three caretakers. That is huge. So despite the best efforts of Snuggle Base and Hokomoko, they do not have the economy to compete here, and they are just trying to desperately win by clever tactics. Now the big question is, are they going to try to go for some big game-winning move? Going to try to go for something cheesy a bit? Do they even have the resources to do so? They aren't far behind enough that they can't at least win by, uh, by better attrition, by better management of their units. Drone has a tendency to throw units away. They tend to be a little bit careless. Not super careless. Against Snuggle Base and Hokomoko, it probably won't be meaningfully. We'll see, though. They might be able to take advantage of it. Like, the level of carelessness that Drone has is quite small. It's one of those things where, you know, if they're fighting someone like Golda, you'll notice it. But if they're fighting players who are lower ranked than them or who aren't quite at their level, it won't be a big deal. It's something, it's still a weakness. It can still be taken advantage of, but it's one of those weaknesses that's, it's a lot smaller than it can appear. Like, when you notice it, it's rare. You notice it because they're against someone like Gold. They're against someone, maybe Google Frog or Sactile. They're against someone who's up at their level and who is pushing them on every front. And that unit attrition combined with their opponents having a massive economic advantage means that they're, well, economic parity at least. That means they eventually lose out. In this case though, Drone is an economic advantage, which is a position from which they're very comfortable to play. And Golda just swarming in to support. Even as Drone loses the last of their Venoms, those Glaives should be able to finish everything off, and that should basically be game and match. I don't see Snuggle Base and Hokomoku coming out of this. Sorry, not and match. This is game one. Should be game at least. Pretty much. Yeah, okay, so Snuggle Base, they're going to lose their factory. Glaives taking that out, and Hokomoku switched over to Shieldbot Factory, but it's not enough. They hadn't really built up anything from that anyway, so that's game one to Golda and Drone. You know, it occurs to me that maybe for the next match, I should focus on one of the players who's not quite so guaranteed to win. I mean, Golda and Drone... It's not always Nogomoko fought hard, but yeah, Golda and Drone are kind of the favorites to win for a reason. So I'll keep that in mind, although I don't know if I'm going to have a choice from this point on, because if if and when Golda and Drone win, that'll be the winner's semifinals, and I typically do the winner's bracket first. So they'll be up against whoever wins between Yogg, Scuzzy, and Google Frog Aquanim. I don't know how that match is going so far... I don't see any reports on that. 
And we're moving to Inculta Wet. This is going to be interesting. It's also... Oh, one, two, four, two. Crap. Hang on a sec. I've... Oh, that's why, because we're not playing with a new version for some reason. I don't know why we're not playing with a new version. Sorry, there was a new version, because there was a bunch of fixes that were made that got merged in, but I guess there wasn't a new stable made. I don't know. I've been making a few bug fixes, as I said, and kind of hoping those would come up, but apparently not. That is a shame. Most of the bug fixes pertains to seeing stuff underwater when you have the refraction 2, but thankfully I have local widgets, so I can just use that fix instead. Nice thing about Refraction 2 is that you get to see the outlines on the water. They don't get blurred by the water because it's actually doing a second rendering pass. The downside is that due to the second rendering pass, it messes up a bunch of the way the widgets assume they're going to work. Like Most widgets are built assuming that you just have one pass and that's it. And you have all your various effects, your the outlines, the extra shader stuff, the various glows and name tags and icons and all that are assumed to be on one render pass and everything else is going to take it from there. Which is not true, because there's actually two render passes, but that's been fixed, just not quite in this version. But like I said, local widgets. So we are on Cult of Wet, a map that has come up in pretty much every 2v2 tournament since just about the start of the 2v2 tournament series. At least, I think so. Definitely fairly recent. Alright, so we are going on to game two, which is on Call of Wet, and I believe we're going to actually write that down. Sorry about that. I, ow. Two in Cult of Wet. Yeah, that is going to be. There we go. That is going to be. Our game two, I'm guessing the Hokomoko and Snuggle Base just figured they have a decent chance on a C map. Which is an interesting thing to assume. Let's see if they are right. I am curious. Alright, so let's switch to that. And Hokomoko and Snuggle Base. Snuggle Base going for the. Whatever this is. Sea bot. <laughs> Shipyard. That's what it is. Sorry. I'm a bit tired. And drone and... Okay. Drone looks like they're going to go for amphib. Gulda is... Possibly going to go for air. Okamoko. Where's their factory? Very strange. Not sure where their factory is. Also, I see another possible bug fix. The commander's not showing up underwater. Actually, neither of the units. Okay, so that's another thing that needs to be fixed, is that second render pass needs to account for the start position thing. Need to find that widget and fix that. Anyway, that's not a huge deal. And drone is... Well... Drone looks like they're probably going to set up fairly soon. Oh, I see, that's why the factory I can't see it, because it's... Yeah, it's being silly. Alright, isn't it? This is how things look right now with Bump Water 2, because I figure, well, why not? And yes, everything now works. We have... Well, we're supposed to have name tags underwater. Why is that not working? What the hell? Great. See, this is why I wanted that stupid stable. Why is that not working? Okay, that's just silly. The name tag should show up underwater. Now I feel really silly for having done that. I'm sorry. I thought I'd be able to actually show that off, but apparently not. Why is that not working? Everything else is working. Outline's working, and... I think X-ray shader's gonna be working. Yeah, X-ray shader works. Outline works. 
See the ducks? Or is X-ray shader working? <sighs> so bloody hard. I don't know, no one was there to merge my changes for a little while, so it's not... Stuff's not working the way I expect it to. And it looks like... Yeah, it looks like X-ray shader did not get properly merged. That's just perfect. Uh, even with local widgets, it's not working. What the hell? Oh! That's why. Maybe. I don't know. Sorry about this. I wanted this to work. I really wanted to show this off. And now I feel like a fool because I have now set up a really difficult to view setup. Okay. Well. <sighs> so that helps a bit. Okay, good. Now we're back in business. Now we have underwater name tags. Awesome. My apologies. Anyway, so the game itself. I'm just coming up very quickly for Snuggle Base. They know they need to use those to get rid of the forces out of the sea. Well, at the same time, Drone did in fact go for that duck scallop setup. And it occurs to me that I should make the outlines a bit fainter underwater. Especially until I manage to fix the issue where they show up in front of the units. And... Drone... Drone getting hit with their own medicine from Hokomoko. Hokomoko coming in here, easily able to deal with... All those wind generators, oh, tile generators actually. Tile generators are a bigger deal than wind generators. Wind generators have variable speed, they have variable power. Tidal generators are always plus 1.2, they are always better than solar plants. So if you're on a map like this, with a lot of water, tidal generators only, only disadvantage is they are fragile. That's it. In every other way, they are at a massive advantage. However, Golda coming in here with snakes, so they went for shipyard. They have their snake set up, so they are pretty good right now. Well, Snuggle Base, how many hunters do they have so far? They have three hunters, should be fairly useful for getting rid of the water units, and they don't have much else at this point. Well, Snuggle Base, on the other hand, trying to fight against, well, trying to fight against Drone, not succeeding, unfortunately for them. Very much not succeeding. It looks like, did I put the wrong outline effect? Great. Anyway, Drone is going to be doing a pretty decent job getting around this. I don't think I did. There we go, that's better. Anyway, sorry, it's it's all for visibility's sake. Anyway, as for the game itself, it looks like Golda is going to be... So Golda's going to be setting up pretty quick for power. They have a lot of mariners. They're just going for economy. Massive economy from Golda. Massive economy for Drone. Actually, all the players right now are running about plus 30 each. So that is a pretty big deal right now. We have plus 60 in total. No striders so far. Nothing major. I mean, the thing with Amphifactory is it can't really go beyond ducks and scallops. That's all it can really do. Which is slightly unfortunate because ducks and scallops are not all that great against everything. They have the things they're good at, but you don't have the unit variety that you get. I mean, boys are useful against above water units, but not against underwater units. Underwater units, really, it doesn't work. And as for over here, scallops coming in, that should be able to help get rid of this pretty quick. So yeah, scallops, no... There's no real easy way for them to get in. Because they're skirmishers underwater, so the ducks, at least in large numbers, have a bit of an advantage being raiders themselves. And then, of course, there's the urchins, which just rip everything apart. Of course, the fact that the other urchin is distracting it. But even then, the health in the urchin is just too high. That scallop, not apparently able to get rid of it. Not quite yet. Is it? No. No, it's not. Oh, just barely. There we go. Gets rid of that. Same time to the north, we do have, well, more urchins. And the hunters cannot deal with that. They can only hit things that are underwater. So they have no way of dealing with this. While at the same time, 
Over to the south, drone just taking territory. Get an overview here, and it looks like both players have a pretty even spread. The setup is fairly reasonably even. There is no real advantage one way or the other. Economically speaking, Sangobes and Hokomoko are slightly ahead, and militarily, the hunters are doing a fairly decent job. And they're getting rid of these... Well, getting rid of anything that's Amphib over to the north. Over to the south, not so much, and there's nothing there. Snuggle Base... Well, sorry, Hokomoko not... Well, Snuggle Base not there to deal with it. Hokomoko losing unit after unit after unit, just... Getting whittled down. And Snuggle Base is going to be finishing this off pretty quick. Over to the north. And the Hunters, they should have no real problem getting rid of the Mariners. The Urchins will be a bit of a problem, but there's so many Hunters now, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. The thing about Hunters is they don't have a hu huge amount of damage, but they're fairly resilient, and they fire re reasonably often. 1.4 second reload time, and fairly powerful attack at that. So enough of them in there, and yeah, as you can see, it just starts to tear everything apart. They're a bit underrated, but there's been a lot of discussion about them recently, about people pointing out that they're a bit underrated, and you shouldn't just... You shouldn't discount them because of that. And to that end, I agree. They should not be discounted just because of that one thing. Snuggle Base is continuing to build up, getting... Okay, yeah, I'm thinking Outline's probably weaker underwater. I wanted consistency, but I think they should just be weaker outright. Anyway, that's beside the point. So at this point, Drone is setting up a nice assault force. Wow, huge amount of scallops. Four scallops from Hokomoko compared to a dozen or so from Drone. Yeah, a bit of a problem there. Shredders, however, are in... No, is that Shredder? Yes, it is. That is, in fact, a Shredder. A Shredder is in place. It is nicely set up. We are going to be seeing Golda's attempt at an Air Force not be able to get off the ground t for too long. They can take the south side, though. No problems there. Oh, wow, that's... That's what I call graphically intensive. Okay. Hmm. Interesting to note. Anyway, at this point... Those Typhoons making sure work of the Hunters... Well, actually, not even sure work of the Hunters. The Hunters are still alive. But yeah, against Typhoons, I'm not surprised. Typhoons are... They're meant to get rid of those units. And Death Charge coming from the Claymore... Helps get rid of the Scallops, but not enough. There are just too many Scallops. We don't even seem to get we don't even get an amusing flight from that claymore when his death charge goes off. It's just just dead. And more and more scallops coming in here, getting rid of all the scallops from Hokomoko. Hokomoko, this one has nothing underwater. However, lines are still fairly even, but Gorda and Drone have just taken a bit of an edge economically. And like I said, in 2v2, that bit of an edge is a much bigger deal than it sounds. I mean that that is the factor here. That is that air factory, that is these five, well, the extra two caretakers, compared to what Hokomoko and what Snuggle Base have. Hokomoko also switching over, well, we noticed Hovercraft from the Claymore. Switched over to Hovercraft, have the flails to get rid of the Air Force. The Air Force, at least, is a little bit less effectual than it could otherwise be. But Drone taking that south very effectively, and well, not so much taking the north, but still shouldn't be that big of a problem. They basically can just take this out at will. And over the south here, these scallops... Well, the Claymore's doing a decent job. The Hunters, however, they're helping. They're definitely helping, but it's not quite enough. And that Claymore getting rid of itself along with a bunch of the scallops. So drone scallop numbers are being reduced, but economic advantage is a big deal. And at this point, military advantage is roughly double for the red team. I think this is going to be it. They can just assault now, pretty much. Drone realizes this has been pushing in pretty consistently. The Claymores have been doing a nice job of dealing with this. But it's still not enough. It's slowly but surely, Drone is pushing in. Drone is winning this war of attrition. By simple fact of having, well, one and a half times the economy. That's it. I mean, the reclaim being the biggest deal. All these conscious here that are reclaiming. That is what's causing the majority of this particular advantage to go in Drone's favor. Now, going on the other hand, well, they are having a bit of a harder time. They're still 
they're still pushing in. I think they're just being a bit more cautious. They're trying not to lose units too much. They have lost a few units here and there, but looks like they are winning overall as well. Yeah, there's just units left and right from Snuggle Base and only a handful from Golda. So at this point, Golda is just winning by not letting units die, while Golda is, sorry, Drone is winning by having way too many units that doesn't matter if they die. So at this point, we're just gonna see one more attack and that'll be, no, not even, not even, not even. Snuggle Base, Tokomoko, throwing the towel. That is game and match. So for the visms that it's, yeah, I thought they were fixed. Anyway, we'll be moving on to the next, I think the, Winners semifinals actually. Or winners Winners Finals. Sorry, that's what it is. It's winners Finals. Sorry, it says semifinals. Challenge doesn't have the right names for things. But yeah, we're moving on to the winners finals. So that is I think a pretty big deal. Once that's set up at least. Man, that, that is that, so we're going to be seeing that in a few minutes, once that gets set up. And other than that, I don't really know what else there is to say. Hmm. Okay, sorry, I'm just playing around with the outline thing. I'm thinking it might actually be better not to have outlines underwater. Or maybe just have really thin ones. I know, I'm kind of... Well, there's not much, much to say at this point. The Winner's Finals has not started yet. Yeah, that lens works okay. That seems to help with visibility a bit. Because the whole point of outline plus x-ray shader is that outline provides a nice distinction between ground and units, and x-ray shader provides a nice distinction between the... Well, actually, sorry. Extra shader just makes it easier to see that the unit is there in the first place. Okay. And... Where is the next match? So the next match will probably be here. And it will be Golda and Drone... Oh, what's... Going with the other match. The other match is not done yet. Yuxa, Skazi, Goofrog, Aquanim. The match that I probably should have been watching this entire time. Because they... That was a bit more up in the air as to who's going to win. Sorry about that. I... That was a mistake on my part. I'm... I'm sorry. But... It will soon be rectified because... It's pretty soon it'll be whoever wins between that... Against... The players here. And then when that's set up, then we will have... Oh, right. I know, I'm fixing bugs in the middle of a tournament. That's... that's just me. But we are waiting for the next match. Actually, no, we'll just wait for the next match. Take a small break. So intermission before Windows Finals. Windows Finals will be up in a couple of minutes, so stay tuned for that. 